This is Jay Adam Smith, the paranormal historian, and you're listening to the Beacon House Podcast. And that's why I can't donate blood anymore. <laughs> nah. I, uh, that one actually was sent to me by Spencer. Is there something you need to talk he, about? He sent me a text full of them. It was just like, I keep reading these off and your voice in my head and you need to say some of these. And I was like, all right, I'm on it. I, I just want you to know that if Tom Hanks can make a movie about it and touch the hearts of people that are uninformed, we're not talking it's about okay. Philadelphia. I wasn't was going. That the movie? I was not going there with that. Oh, oh was you were not? Oh, where God. were you going with it? Oh, was, you went there. No, the Tom that, Hanks movie with Denzel Washington where he has AIDS. That's Philadelphia. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Philadelphia. <laughs> God, I could have been something. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the Beacon House podcast. And regardless of what's going on with Casey's blood or my blood or Hunter's movie career, um, we're here today to talk to you guys about some more Halloween stuff. So we're we're a couple weeks in. We've done a few things here. Um, we had J. Adam Smith. We can give a big shout out to him. Knox Ghost Tours, a paranormal historian. He was wonderful. Helped us kick the month of October off right and get in the spirit of spooky things. Then we had... <coughs> Dustin Payne from Frightworks was on, cast manager over there. He was awesome. Told us a lot about The Haunt. And, I mean, we're, we're, we're going strong, man. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know about you guys. I couldn't be happier with how October is unfolding. What do you guys think? It's awesome. Okay. I love it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Now, this oh week. Oh, my God, Casey. This week, we I don't have a guest. We don't, and it got cold this week, too. It started to actually oh, feel like it. fall. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys see some Han Solo? I did. I've not. Oh, I've seen, no. I've seen no, some Han Solo around. I've been too busy trying to make yeah. sure my nipples don't show at work. Uh, oh. Hey, no one should yuck anyone's yum here. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm not over that nipple comment. Literally. <laughs> fucking, what you. Literally for the last three weeks that we've had these guests, secretly, until this week, I've told you guys, I've been delving into some sick and twisted stories of American history. And I'm so excited to the get true uh, stories, right? True stories. We're right. Uh, these are these are true right. stories. Wait. Yeah, and I just want everybody to know we, we have no idea what Casey's about to talk about. We don't know what he's about to unload on us. We're just ready to hear these crazy tales of real American horror. You know, so will, will any of these be scarier than the six minutes of silent video that I, guy going down the hole? No, that's terrifying. Okay. The, the guy swimming down, yeah, like yeah. Did, not you know, with you no know, respirator. When we you talking about the blue hole that we yeah. showed, yeah, yeah. you you realize I the video that you saw that we talked about wasn't the one I was thinking of. You actually were looking at a video of a guy in the ocean going into this like cave. I was talking about this weird hotel in Italy or somewhere in Europe where a guy dives just as deep, but inside this like weird pool. And it has goes, like little buildings in it. Has buildings and shit in it. So oh, Google. so there's more than one of those. That's I think it's great. called, but it's the same guy who also goes into the ocean and sits at the edge of this massive hole, which is the scariest thing ever. And I'm just waiting for like Cthulhu to come up and grab him and pull him in. Yeah, Jesus. Okay. So, anyways, let's get into this. Let's what, do this. What got me started let's on go! this? On this first one. <laughs> let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> the first one I have pulled up here actually started when I made a Facebook post. I don't know if you guys saw it. Where someone found a news article and it said, officials say, or police say, uh, warning parents to watch out for marijuana edible candies for, for Halloween. And yeah. someone, someone posted yes. that and then was like, no one in the history ever is going to give your kids their marijuana edibles for free. Grow the fuck up. <laughs> Shout out, Knox. <laughs> yeah. No, this was actually like, the, the caption was part of the, it was on Reddit. Oh, I don't know who I said thought it, it was Knox. No. <clears throat> So, and I remember watching a documentary about urban legends, and it brought up the poison Halloween candy myth. Okay. So, in history, in the history of the United States, there's not been a legal death. Legal death? Would that be the right term? I mean, I mean death, it, one way or the other. No one, is, no one has been death. murdered yeah. by a stranger via candy on Halloween ever. However... 
technically, there is a reality to this myth. Are we talking about the razor blade and the apple and all that stuff? No. Okay. No, what we're, we're going back to 1970 to Deer Park, Texas. Ooh. All right. Okay. Mr. I hear that's near Cream Can Junction. <laughs> I thought Cream Can Junction was in Iowa. Are those no, they let you fuck potatoes there. Oh, wrong potato. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. So Please we're, joined, we're yeah. joined by a gentleman named Ronald O'Brien, and he's going Halloween or trick-or-treating with his two children. Sounds and like a, group a reasonable of other, guy. A group of other children and their, you know, their parents, and they're going along doing their trick-or-treating, mm-hmm. and they come across a dilapidated kind of sketchy-looking house. They go up, knock on the door. No one answers, so the kids decide to move on to the next house. Mr. O'Brien hangs back a little bit. Then comes, approaches the kids. Hey, someone finally came to the house. He handed me pixie sticks. Here, guys, take these pixie sticks. All right, cut to after trick-or-treating. The kids get home. Eight-year-old Timothy O'Brien. Dad, I want to have some candy. And he says, you can have one piece of candy before you go to bed. You should eat that pixie stick. The dad suggests it? Dad suggests that he should have the pixie stick. What a rotten bastard. About 10, 20 minutes later, Timothy starts convulsing, vomiting, and then dies. Okay. All right. Police show up. The whole investigation ensues. It turns out the kid had cyanide poisoning. He had enough cyanide in him to kill two adults. And And that's what was in the pixie stick? They found out it was from the pixie stick, and the dad said that they should look into whoever owned that house because that was how he got the pixie sticks. So someone poisoned his kid's candy. Well, they also found out that all the pixie sticks those kids received, a group of kids, up to four, also had cyanide in them. Okay. Then, as police delve into you know, the investigation a little bit more, they found out Mr. O'Brien had $100,000 in debt and had just taken life insurance policy out on his children. Great. Whoa. Go, go Ronald. Old Ronald McDonald poisoned his own children, or attempted to poison multiple children, but only poisoned his own son with a pixie stick, and killed him for the money. Well. So I have a few notes that I've taken. That's, that's the story. Portrait of American life. See here. Not a good dad. That Can't guy. afford that white picket fence unless you kill Timmy. Yeah, not a good dad, that one. Yeah. That Ronald. And it's, it's what, what I, that's, that's the one I wanted, the, one, the first one I wanted to bring up is because a lot of people every year say, oh, you know, watch out for the Halloween candy that you get. It might be poison. There might be something, it might be tainted. It's never happened. The only time it did happen, it was a guy doing it to his own family to get money. So, That's so gross. he actually was he actually got the nickname the Candyman, which is what the movie The Candyman I believe is based off of. Okay. Very okay. very thinly based. And we're off sure of. you're you're 100% sure there's never been a documented case of like somebody trying to give out poison candy or anything. No. Nope. There's there was one person who gave out laxative chocolate to teenagers cuz she thought they were too fucking hilarious. That's hilarious. She thought they were too old to trick or treat. Yeah. And then there's another person who gave out hard pieces of inedible like like marble or rock. Uh, that they thought were candy, and a bunch of kids choked on it, but no one died. No one's ever been killed by poison candy for Halloween other than Mr. Ronald O'Brien killing his own eight-year-old son. For right, the so insurance. eat whatever the fuck you want, unless That's you see right. Ronald O'Brien and get the <laughs> fuck away from that guy. So Mr. O'Brien was convicted of one count capital murder and four counts of attempted murder in 1975, and was executed by lethal injection in 1984 as a crowd of demonstrators stood outside the prison shouting trick-or-treat and pelting uh, anti-lethal injection or anti-death penalty people with hard candies. Jesus. Like, there's a big line, a big group of people throwing hard candies and Starburst and Skittles at these people just chanting trick-or-treat as When did that happen? When did the... 1984? 1984. It was a good year. Ghostbusters? Maybe not. Well, I always just think the Van Halen record and the Prince record, but... Uh, wow, okay, Jesus. Now, despite <clears throat> this crime, Joel Best, a sociologist at the University of Delaware, has been warning people not to worry about the alleged poison and Halloween candy myth. He called it a uh, Halloween sadism phenomenon for decades. He chalks the whole thing up to hysteria and how society uses urban legends to stir up fear. D- uh, well, okay, Let, that's a good... Uh, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Do, yeah. you, do you feel like society uses urban legends to, to, I don't know, to, to make fear? Or do you think that it's just fun to talk about? Like, well, it's fun to talk about, but I also think there is a, it, it 
instills fear into your head. Like I, it puts something in the back of your I head. I got you. I got you. Just like if you were to, you know, be hanging out with a lovely lady and you go and park your car in like a park or something and it's late at night, there's always that thing in the back of your head, that fear of someone leaving a hook in the side of your car or right. some yeah, random like deranged. Maniac, those yeah. As soon as something scratches through your car, lunches. you shit yourself. And it's one of those yeah. things that it would never happen, but you freak out and like you put, you build yourself up to that fear. And so that's what he said. He chalks up the whole, uh, what did, what did I call it? The Halloween sadism phenomenon. He chalks that whole sure. thing up to urban legend and just hysteria. Well, and those things were, I, I feel like those things were a lot more prevalent before you could just fact check stuff on mm-hmm. your phone. Um, like in, that happened in the 70s. In the 70s, stuff like that wasn't why, I mean, you could probably get away with something. He probably almost got away with it. Um, I, I don't know. There was, there was a whole, there used to be a whole culture apparently uh, where if a guy took a girl on a date and he wanted to like make out and he would pretend like his car ran out of gas and they were stranded, and like they had to sit in the car together out like at the edge of town. It's, it's 2018. You can't do that anymore. No, yeah, that'd GPS. be considered rape now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But that even that even happened in the Michael Jackson in the video for Thriller. Then again, I guess Michael turned out to have a questionable. You know what? He's probably not yeah. an example. Um, but yeah, that, I mean that was like a massive thing. So yeah, uh, scare culture. I guess you could call that shit. What else, <laughs> what else you got for us, Case? Well, um, I actually with that I was wanting to know: have has there any been any kind of <clears throat> weird thing that you've obtained or gotten from trick-or-treating that you thought was questionable so you threw it away <laughs> that you can like that like sticks out like you got an apple with a razor blade is that what you said I don't know. well supposedly that's if people wanted to hurt kids they would they would because you know there used to be like the healthy alternative like parents were like well i don't want my kid eating all that sugar and stuff and so some people would give out like apples and bananas and fruit and then this big wave of uh protection came out behind that they were like, oh, that stuff's even worse don't don't give them an apple because it's not wrapped it isn't sealed, so somebody could have put like took a taken a, like a syringe and injected it with something. They, there was rumors of people sticking razor blades down in the apple, so when you bite them, it like cuts your mouth up. But how would you not notice a razor blade? Like there'd be a huge slit where someone pressed a razor blade. I guess down that, I guess apple. if you if you get one of the old razor blades, like you put in a, a shaver, like an old fifty style mm-hmm. shaver, they're super super thin. And you could probably slide one in right through the skin of an apple and never even know that it was in there. Like Made you, in America. You, you'd almost not be able to see it at all. Well, then you also have those uh, people that are taking pictures at Walmart, and it's like razor blades taped to the hands of like the cart, like the handrail. So when people oh, grab it, they shit. slice their hand. Oh, I had not. Whoa, no. There's also razor blades on monkey bars. So when people went, like took their kids, they like slice their hands open. When they're That's going fucked up. The- yeah. But it's one of those things also where you find it on the internet and I find it on Facebook, and it could just be that this person went out there, taped razor blades to the monkey bar, just took a picture of it, took them all down, and then made a big Facebook post about it. That's true. That's entirely possible. Because we live in a time where that is something that where people do. Where everything's fake. Everything's staged for a fucking Instagram post, you know? Yeah. yeah. I get it. I get that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's, so this, that, that one there's wasn't. A, there's a definite danger to trick-or-treating. Like, there's, like you're going to strangers' houses. Is there, though? Well, I mean, there's a the, the, look. I love it. I loved it when I was a kid. It was the most one of the most magical. And times it doesn't of happen that much anymore, and it kind of bums me out. Well, yeah, that is kind of going. I, yeah, away. and you don't see it. Like if you go to the neighborhoods, you don't just see everybody out. Like more often than not, they do like a. Have you heard like trunk or treat? Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody will go to like the mall. their their mall that or their church, thing. and they'll they'll have all the they'll just open their trunks and they'll be stand they'll just stand at their car and people go around to the cars. I get that, but dude, I'm here to tell you. Like, I grew up when there was real trick-or-treating. Like, you would rush home from school. It was crazy. And there would just be people all over the fucking neighborhood. Mm-hmm. There was, and I guess there has to be enough kids in the neighborhood. So you've got to have, like, young families that all have, like, four to, like, ten-year-old kids. And, they, you know, I get, I get that there's got to be a time and a place. I didn't ever really thought about that. I did just you like, use oh. the plastic pumpkin head or did you use a pillowcase? I, I, I had – no, I never did a pillowcase. I had uh, – I did have a pumpkin thing. Those don't hold much candy. So later on, we would get one of the – like, a big plastic trick-or-treat bag – to put candy in and you have two or three bags, but like, uh, I loved it. I mm-hmm. thought it was one of the most magical evenings of the year. The only thing that ever rivaled the feeling of Halloween, it started getting dark on Halloween and like the very first trick-or-treaters would come to our door yeah. before we even got me ready in my stupid plastic costume or whatever, you know, like fuck, whatever it was. And you get mad. You get mad. You're like, I should be out there. No, I got excited. Yeah, you get it. You get real amped up. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. But that we would have a bowl of candy and there would be like, you'd hear it on the door. And you'd be like, oh, fuck, trick-or-treaters are here. You know, and my parents were real Spencer cool. Spencer knocked on the table. I knocked on the table to simulate knocking on the door. But, like, and you would see him at the door and go, oh, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. And you would try to figure, is that one of my friends? Do I know them? Is that the, the, the Johnsons from up the road or whoever? It was great. And as it gets dark, everybody's got a jack o on their porch burning. Like, I actually lived in a neighborhood here in Knoxville where, like, every house had a jack o on the porch burning. And there were, like, just tons of people out in the streets. 
And it was incredible to be out in that and just like go up to the houses, get candy. And a lot of times people would answer the door in costume. Oh, it was, it was the best. I loved it when people decorated their houses like a haunted house and you have to like walk oh, yeah. through like scary stuff to get to their door Amazing. to get candy. It was incredible. Th- put I stuff think, outside uh, to get scared of. Shit. For real though, like on your point, I think, I, I think all these people doing the idea of the mall and the, the church trunk or treat thing is nice because the, the intent behind it is good and it's not bad in its own right. But the, the lack of people, like you were saying, Casey, out in the street actually just going on an adventure with a group of kids and maybe one parent trailing behind to make sure that they don't actually get hurt or something is more the fear culture that you guys discussed a few minutes ago in that uh, people are helicopter parenting to fucking death the the need to expand and step outside of the village if if you want to go back in time and all that stuff we'll be doing that here next okay oh fuck great but yeah just like you you can't protect people forever and it's stupid and you wind up making an entire culture of weird like worm people that can't do shit for themselves and are essentially useless and cause more damage because of that by not letting them grow enough to go, hey, I just did a thing, and it was kind of creepy, but it was also exciting, and I'm safe, right. and there was, like, all of that. There's there's a better psychological term for what that is, but I think that is kind of going away, shrinking. Like, the world is getting smaller in its own right because of the internet, which is good for communication, but I think it's also destroying a lot of natural things, which is not good. So that's sure. a discussion for another time. Yeah. That's I true. just, I just find it fascinating that one guy's attempt at basically insurance fraud and murdering his own son, the sick bastard has resulted in this mass hysteria that your kid is going to go out trick or treating and come back with arsenic candy. Well, and also, um, I, I remember always bringing the candy home and we would like spread it all over the bed and we'd mm-hmm. look at it. And if any of it looked sketchy, we'd throw it away. Yeah, like if, if it was parents, like a little bit torn, you yeah. toss it. But I know I was never super into candy either. I know a lot of kids are eating it the minute they get it. They're just like, wow. Or, like, or there was always that one house that gave full candy bars, and you were like, oh, Those were shit. the best. Yeah, yeah. My um, favorite was whenever you went, and they were just like, hold up this big bowl, and you just stick your whole hand in and bring out a handful, and you're like, you'd look at them for a second, and they go, yeah, that's fine. Get another one. I love that. I love that. That's great. Yeah, or where they would let you pick your own amount, mm-hmm. yeah. rather than like like a lot of the a lot of the places like you open it up and they put it in your bag and you can hear just like a few teeny little like a, those generic <laughs> suckers when you yeah. hit just like flip 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 in the bag and you just go bitch really mm-hmm. really I fucking wa- I I wore this I wore this fucking sweaty ass mask with this little fucking rubber band with this string this shit I'm you know what I mean like Spencer bought it at Kroger he knows you can I get fucking two humiliated bags myself for in this uniform I walked yeah. all the way up your slippery ass driveway and did all this crap really for those three fucking generic suckers that's all I'm gonna get you bitch you know I remember suppo- the little- that's the idea supposedly if you don't get a good haul you're supposed to go back and fuck them up mm-hmm. there was yeah. a vengeance to Halloween and by God if we've missed anything lately it's that we have lost the spirit of Halloween you don't take care of me I'm coming back to fuck your house up there was, there was a tree that had been ruined by toilet paper in my mom's neighborhood a couple years ago yeah. for months Dude, like it, it t- took them forever to get it to out. that point one of the most magical days of the year is the <laughs> day after Halloween it just drive around and see people's shit fucked up we'll see they, were, they fucking were greedy for me, when I got too old to go trick or treating, my favorite thing to do was to hand out candy, you know, pass pass the torch kind of thing, like be the person who hands out candy and sit there and pick from the bowl and watch shitty edited Halloween movies yes. on AMC. Because yes, they show like totally. Halloween and Friday the 13th, they took all the good stuff out, but you just picture you know you've seen it the 30 days times. of halloween and it's then so halloween perfect. day itself the entire halloween movie franchise on amc yep. Yep. And you just sit there There's and watch shitty movies eat shitty candy and just feel real good about how creepy that, i just love it i love halloween that's the thing and that campy side of halloween is probably my favorite part of it yeah that's why i like uh hellfest so much more than just like Still really scary, scary that's why film. i really like trick or treat or trick or treat if you've yeah. not yeah. seen that anthology kind of horror movie mm-hmm. you know my favorite really halloween good. memories actually were not as much as I love the whole dress up and all that thing, we're not those things. And I wasn't even necessarily um, at the point where it felt weird because I was getting too old to go out and do that with all these kids running around. But when I realized that I could just stay home, you know, the the day of and watch, like you said, the edited Halloween movies and stuff instead of going to Hollywood video, may you rest in peace, um, to rent them. And then when Halloween night began in earnest, the trick-or-treating part, mom and I would swap 
over to Turner Classic Movies, and she and I would just dig in with a big ass bowl of popcorn and watch The Mummy and Dracula and Creature from the Black Lagoon. So Lagoon. good, perfect. Perfect. We, we did that evenings. too. After it was a little too late for the kids to be. And and this, did you ever get this? After everybody stopped trick or treating, you kind of like go ahead and like shut the front door, turn on the Halloween movies, get the popcorn. Same thing. Mm-hmm. Sit down to like try to get scared a little bit, and then you have that one more fucking knock at the door. Yeah. And, and it like, always fucks you up, it's too. It's 11 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And it's like that one weird trick-or-treater that's like still, he's going to stay out all night. And he doesn't give a fuck. And it's probably a kid that's like in high school, probably too old to be out. And it's just kind of that unnerving thing. It starts to get, Halloween starts to get fucking scary mm-hmm. later on. Mm-hmm. So I, I totally, I, I think there's a lot of cool ways to um, enjoy Halloween. Okay, keep, tell, Casey, give us some more. Give us some more uh, American horror well, stuff here. I, I have, I, the next one I'm going to move on to is pretty big chunk. Okay. Um, but I want to ask, favorite Halloween movie to dig into on Halloween? Oh, fuck. Uh, Mine, right off the bat, Ernest Scared Stupid. I have to watch it every <laughs> Halloween once. It's such a good movie. Oh, God. I don't really have one. I just you literally just the power of to. milk. Whatever cheesy thing happens to be on is, is one of my favorites. I like, uh, also like Friday the 13th, the original and the original Halloween. Yeah. Both are great Halloween movies. I agree. And uh, <laughs> man, believe it or not, the last couple of years, I was actually, the week of Halloween, I was actually away on vacation at the beach. Mm-hmm. And so we had like a really limited cable in the hotel room whatever, and we actually wound up watching Halloween Town which is so cheesy but again it's that cheesy makes that, you feel good it's that cheesy part of Halloween that's so fun mm-hmm. and not the dark like let's go crawl through an asylum like there's I, I like the lighter side of Halloween and like the pageantry of it I, I'm a big fan of that whole like, like I like the fact that you go to fucking Walgreens in October and there's like scarecrows and pumpkins in it you know it, yeah. your community kind of turns into this fun place I like that. That's the spirit of Halloween. So any movies like that, or I, I, I will say this: this week I started watching the Curious Creations of Christine McConnell on Netflix, and I think it captures that. It is fucking magical. If you Tales of the Crypt Cooking Show. Yeah, that's basically. great. That's a great choice. Oh, it basically is. It's, oh, well, God. Dude, she's a massive like uh, Instagram celebrity anyway, and she does these crazy photo shoots where she recreates like alien, scenes from Alien. Like she becomes Ripley, and like mm-hmm. the aliens like eating her, and but she also like cooks and bakes and she's like the Martha Stewart of like horror horror <laughs> that's great you know it's really so they did a she actually got a Netflix show from it <laughs> and it's really quirky you're either gonna love it or hate it I loved it and it absolutely gave me the Halloween the, mm-hmm. the good Halloween feeling so it's on Netflix right now check it out um, and uh, supposedly there's a new incredibly scary show uh, Haunting on Hill House or Haunting, Haunting of Hill House Haunting of Hill House supposed to be scary so that's on Netflix too right it yep. just, just started and it's Apostle supposed, came out on Netflix yeah. this Friday, and that's supposed to be a really good horror movie. Hell House is supposed to be the scariest thing anybody's ever seen. Load up Netflix and watch horror. Dude. And um, in, in spite of that, um, Netflix and all that shit is actually robbing you, Beacon House listeners. So while you should use them, um, cable, cable does have its place. If, if, you, if you have it still, why don't you channel surf and see what great movies you know, the edited, you're paying for? All the good bloody stuff taken out. I mean, true, but the, the Discovery, again, we talked about it weeks ago. Turner Classic the, movies, flipping to that movie. Yeah, like, well, imagine, being like, imagine, oh shit, that one. And or blah, just blah, imagine blah. on Halloween or the week of Halloween flipping through and Beetlejuice is on. Oh, yeah. I actually don't have a specific movie either. I think I kind of like it. depends on the year because you, you and I... I, I guess watch all horror movies year round. Yeah, we consume it so much, it kind of goes down to: Am I in the mood for I, this subgenre or that I one? I save some. I'll save some. I'll put some aside and make sure not to watch it all year, so that way on Halloween I can watch it and enjoy it. I like the idea of maybe because um, Libby and I want to do a Halloween get together now that we're getting our own place starting next year. Kind of what you said, Corinne was doing with everybody. But I like the idea of like when everything dies down, like getting. Because I'm going to buy back the Universal movies. I don't think she's seen those, and like showing her those because they they are hokey, yeah. for sure. Like they don't age well I mean, necessarily. Not is a classic. Yes, sure. but on that specific note, those movies do have the charm, gets you past the stupid stuff, and what's not stupid is really well made and genuinely creepy. At I times. agree. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. All right, guys. You ready? So. The, the reason I drag that one on so much is because the next story that we're going to talk about is incredibly depressing oh, great. and real sad. Why didn't you it's start gonna, with it? <laughs> it's going to bring it's going to bring it down for a little bit. Um, if people have weak stomachs, you may not want to you know listen Don't to this one. Down. The the reason I got if interested they could, into if they stomached this many episodes of this podcast, there's no horror story that's going to send them running away. Okay. Um, I got interested in this story. He's convinced. Oh my god. 
I got interested in this story when I uh, picked up. A, I was told to pick up a book called The Hunger. Oh Jesus! Christ. And it's it's a book that is written by Alma Katsu, and she basically took the story of the Donner Party mm-hmm. and kind of gave it a supernatural twist. Okay. So the reason everything happened to them, there was like a supernatural reason. And as I started reading this book, I was really fascinated with the story, and I actually wanted to delve into what really happened before I finished this book. So I okay. put it aside, and I found this book that was uh, mentioned on last podcast on the left. So they did a whole two-part on this thing. I listened to that. I thought it was fascinating. But they also told you to pick up a book called The Indifferent Stars Above by James Daniel Brown. And there was a lot of stuff that was not talked about on the podcast. They said you need to read the book. I also agree. There's a lot of stuff that they left out, and I'm not going to talk about it here because you definitely need to pick this book up and read it. It will make you consider however shitty your life is. It will never, you know, pale to comparison to what these people went through. And this is the hunger. That that was called the 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 supernatural fictional twist. It's called the hunger. Got it. The the real actual tale of the what happened to the Donner Party. It's called The Indifferent Stars Above. The Indifferent Stars Above. Yes. Uh, re- reiterating for you guys, if you don't know what's about to happen, buckle up and <laughs> get a brown bag just in case. Let's do it. Let's do it. In April of 1846, a group of nearly 90 immigrants left Illinois headed west. Led by the Donner brothers, Jacob and George attempted to take a newly supposed short, shorter route to California. They're eventually trapped by heavy snowfall in, uh, in the Sierra Nevada mountains. So basically, they, they left in April, and they were traveling through the plains, you know, through, and they get to a point where this guy named uh, Hastings, Lord Hastings, no, Lanford Hastings, my apologies. Okay. And Mr. Hastings basically had this whole get rich scheme where he had a whole town that he was trying to build, and he had this shortcut he wanted people to go through that town. And so he basically convinced this big group of wag- like wagoners, wagon trail people. And you got to understand, these people had everything in their whole entire lives packed up into a small wooden buggy mm-hmm. pulled by their livestock. That Conestoga wagon type. Like, we're talking a real fucking Oregon Trail type shit. Yeah, the oh, Oregon yeah. Trail Oregon written by trail. Stephen King. And it's like, I mean, in going from Illinois to California is like months. But so the thing is that so they took the trail. It already started getting a little rocky, and it started getting... A little intraversible. Intraversible? Were they Rocky Mountain High at this point? Yeah, Rocky Mountain. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's where we got. That John Denver's <laughs> full of shit. Uh, but they actually got to a point where they couldn't go any further, so they had to wait for Mr. Hastings. And they stopped the wagon trail for mm-hmm. two nights while they sent someone ahead. And this person comes back and goes, there's a different shortcut. This one goes up through the Sierra Nevada mountains, and right, right, right around the Great Lakes. Head up that way. And, you know, they'll, they'll tell us where to go from there. And basically, they got stuck. And they, the guy who wrote the Indifferent Stars Above. Um, That's a great title, by the way, whoever you are. Uh, it's wonderful. But he, he wrote in the book that it was the coldest winter in U.S. history. These people suffered for like two to three months up in the mountains mm-hmm. under heavy snow. They, I think he said they went through five blizzards. Jesus Down Christ. in the teens. God. It's insane. And it's, you know, I think about shit like that when I like get cold at home, and I go, well, fucking, here's my mortality. I'm going to have to go turn the fucking thermostat up a notch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, fucking, the floor seems cold. I'm going to put some more extra socks on. You know, like, people used to live outside in the winter. They'd have to cut open a tauntaun and crawl in. I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, God. On solo season. Damn, oh right. man, <laughs> it comes full circle. <laughs> now, one of the one of the things from the book that like struck a chord with me is there's a point where they were they set up camp, they started like trying to make shelter to get somewhat some warmth. <laughs> mm-hmm. And there was one point where it snowed so heavy the night before that everyone was buried in snow, and this guy woke up in the snow by himself uh, and woke oh, no. everybody else up from screaming because he thought he was abandoned. Uh huh. And so Shit. then, so. Picture this. Picture you, you're you out in this horrible situation, right? You're laying there. You wake up. All you see is white snow. There's not a soul in sight. And you start screaming because you think you've been left. And all of a sudden, people start popping out of the <laughs> snow <laughs> like zombies. <laughs> I, like, I'm surprised this person didn't lose. Had their, a heart attack uh, or yeah, something. Yeah. Like, it's already way too cold. Yeah. 
And that's that's what's really going to be bad about this is because this is like a harrowing tale, and I feel like we're going to make a lot of shitty jokes about these poor people. It's just coping with the darkness of it. We don't mean these terrible things we say. Ooh, that was good. Hashtag tauntauns. Ah. Hashtag tauntaun. <laughs> Hashtag vegan cat. God. <laughs> we're just trying to make sure people are throwing up but enjoying it while you talk. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I haven't got to the gross part yet. I know, but we're getting there. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They resorted to cannibalism. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, now, there, there it is. Yes. They had to start eating each other. Now, it, first, it started off with uh, the first three people that died just of natural causes. Uh, it was then talked about amongst the group, <clears throat> you know, we, we need to survive. We, need, we should, you know, resort to the worst thing. Then those three individuals were divided up so that the family members wouldn't get their own dead relatives as food. Oh yeah, shit! That's actually that's I was gonna sweet, ask, but <clears throat> fucked up. Well, I was uh, gonna ask about. I was gonna be. What are the fucking mechanics of resorting to cannibalism? Like, if a group goes, all right, we're gonna start eating each other. Like, how do you go? Okay, wait. I don't want to eat like my daughter. I'd rather eat a stranger, but he yeah. doesn't want to eat his daughter. Who like they had, the, they literally divided people up amongst family. Shit. There are no vegan now, cats before, in this crew. I missed a little story here. Before the cannibalism started, the reason this was kind of all <laughs> talked about. Uh, <sighs> Hashtag vegan warrior. <laughs> Keep going. Fuck shit. I hate you guys. No, no, no. Again, tr- this is getting really dark. He's trying to liven it. These are just hashtags so, from the right oh, yeah, thing. Go. This kid found a mouse and just popped it in his mouth alive and Jesus ate it. Christ. Yeah. Like that's how hungry he was. Totally. And he lost it. Like because he was so thin and so just hungry, he ate that. And they said that he just started going around screaming, Give me my bones. And he was like biting people and attacking people and like trying to like, you know, eat them. And he Mm -hmm. went ape shit. Well, then apparently shortly after that, he died. And that's he was the third one. And they had to like divvy it up and be like, all right, I don't want to eat my own husband. Yeah. So I'm going to give it to them. And the way they dehumanized it was by removing arms, legs and the head. Holy Christ. And then taking the skin Taking the skin off, taking the organs, and cooking the organs was the first you, part. Somebody would have had to step up and be like, all right, look, I'm going to go dismember these people. I'm going to skin them. I'm going to cook them. And it's just going to be, you're not going to know who you're eating. It's just a big plate of meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They would, somebody would have had to have gone, that's the only way to maybe not make it just turn into like a, literally a horror movie mm-hmm. is to go, okay, look, who are we going to, who's willing to like die? And then let's go back behind this rock. And then he just comes out with like a big serving dish. Can and goes, you imagine Don't worry about who this is. that dude. Or just, I mean, any of them, but man, the guy that had to dismember these people that he was traveling there's always with. always somebody. You, you got to think if you find yourself in those situations. If we got stuck out in the wild, who would be, who'd be the first? I'd be the first to die, and I'd be useless uh, to both of you. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Who, I nobody wants to think. kind of sweet. <laughs> <laughs> is that a diabetes? It is. That was a diabetes cannibalism <laughs> joke? Yeah. We have really... <laughs> Holy uh, shit. I'm, such a, I'm such a terrible person. Diabetes, <laughs> cannibalism, inception jokes. Cannibal diabetic You're two joke. layers deep, Casey. I know. I'm sorry. That's a definite new level for this podcast right there. We've fucking hit a plateau. Can we call this one diabetic cannibalism just for that joke? No. Oh, Fuck. my God. So a- after, after those three were eaten, people felt so weird and like odd about it that when they got hungry again, instead of resorting back to cannibalism, actually roasted and ate their own shoes. Because back then, shoes were made out of just leather. like uh, oh, leather and hide. Yeah, okay. So they literally Kinda devoured like their beef, own shoes. However, turkey. that gets rid of your warmth for your feet. Yeah, so you fucking, yeah, you're oh, God. gangrene. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. not only that, but it also you're covered in snow. Frostbite. Everything's wet. The clothing you're wearing is not as sturdy as it is nowadays. So it's like falling off of them. I mean, how long did this go on? They were up there for th- three months. And they were just waiting on somebody to come save they them? They got up there and like... They got up there in October, and they didn't come down off the mountain until February is when the I last people were taken I wonder why they didn't come off. down sooner. I wonder why they didn't They got go. stuck. Oh, they, they were trapped. literally They were trapped. I and they couldn't it. move their wagons. They, like, the pass was snowed in. Okay, Like, they it. had to go through this pass, and it got completely fucked up. That's fucking terrible. Is that where Silent Hill is? It was called... Or originally, it was called Truckee Lake. Now it's called Donner Lake. Okay. Why is the area. Why would you name it after that? <laughs> that that's exactly why they named it after that. Uh. So, still Jesus. haven't got to the worst part. Great. <laughs> uh, there's also another group that, mm-hmm. like, actually tried to go find help called the Forlorn Hope. 
Okay. That's what they called their group. And they actually were the first ones to talk about murdering people for cannibalism. Oh, God. Okay, and they yeah. had two native guides. Uh, let's see if I can find their names here. And the two native... Uh, no, I didn't get their names. So they were basically just two Native Americans that were helping guide these people. They started seeing this, and they went, all right, in the middle of the night, we're going to leave. And they just left oh, because great. they knew... What was about to happen. Yeah, they were going to be the first two chosen if they had to start resorting to murdering somebody. Well, and I was going to say, why didn't they... Could none of these people fucking hunt? But if it's winter, everything's hibernating. I guess there's not a lot to hunt. At one point, they did find yeah. a deer yeah. on the Forlorn Hope group. Uh, they found a deer. The guy... There was a guy and a girl... The guy killed it. It dropped down. They immediately ran over there and drank its blood Shit. just to try to get something. And when they dismembered the be- the deer, they headed back. One person also died mm-hmm. as they're bringing the deer back. And people before this, her name was Sarah Graves. Before her husband even basically hit the ground dead, people were like, dibs. Like, can we have your, can we have your husband? And she's like, well, yeah, I guess I'd like to mourn a little bit. And they're like, no, no, no. Can we, can we have, can we well, have him? you can mourn while I'm <laughs> sauteing him over this fire. But and we're so about to even die. when they got back to the, the <laughs> fire, like to, to camp, they cut up the deer and were roasting it by the end of the night after the deer was eaten and devoured other people in that group had already stuck that guy's heart on a stick and was roasting it over a fire after they already got deer meat, they still preferred Oh, uh, still they probably were developing still... a taste for it at that point. Yeah. Did they? Uh, did they have? Like, his... I mean, you start going insane. From my like, I guess the theory is yeah. that if you start getting a taste for human flesh, you start also losing your fucking mind. Mm-hmm. Do you know if they ate his? Uh, I think uh, they they literally they dismembered him and used him as a backpack to carry. Like they basically used his like. <laughs> arm. Hey, can you put my books in, Fred? <laughs> When I the snow, when terrible. there was a break in the snow and the sun would come out, they would actually take the human flesh, skin it, and drape it over sticks to like kind of dry it out as jerky, human jerky. Good God! See, this is going to sound horrible, but this is to me, this is getting funnier. <laughs> really? What I'm is so wrong with sorry. you? Well, like he's happened. always been curious what no. man tastes like. Well, first off, did you guys ever see Cannibal the Musical? No, from the creators of South Park. Okay, for starters, there's like that. And it's kind of the same thing, except they made a musical out of it, and they're all sitting around this fire, and they're eating, like, a foot, and it's just some guy's foot. But it, it looks like a real foot, and they're just casually talking. Can you it. imagine what kind of depth of depravity we've reached where Casey is earnestly telling a historical tragedy, and you and I are just making fun of it yeah, the whole I, time? I, I, maybe it's just nervous tension. But no, it I've, seems I'm, like this what once they cross, to me, the horror is the part where they go, we're, we're going to have to eat each other. There's no way out. We're trapped up here. There's no deer. There's nothing. We're going to have to start eating each other. Yeah, I think, too, there's children amongst these people. Sure. And the parents had to make it kind of like a joking situation just not to freak out the kids. So Mm -hmm. it's like the kid would be like, I'm hungry. What are we having for dinner? And it's like, oh, we're having the mailman's toes again. (laughs) I made a stew. Oh, my God. And they have to, like, make a funny, they have to make it funny. Now, so chop the these carrots don't... up. Chop these damn carrots up. Now, put that <laughs> foot in the stew pot. Th- that, see, that's the part to me where it's, it's, again, I realize this is a real thing that happened. I'm not trying to be insensitive. But, but the, as I hear more of it, like, once they decide, once everybody knows this is happening and we're eating each other and just going to be whenever somebody falls over, like, they're just yeah. like, hey, can, can you grab me his nipple? Or like, can I cut the inside of his arm off? Like, you know, I'm, I'm over here. I'm making a souffle. <laughs> Now, they're just dividing everybody up even before they fuck, before they're dead. <clears throat> Man, can I have your ears if just anything happens in the next twenty four hours? Just uh, asking. Uh, but you know there was cannibalism in the colonies too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like over in the colony, the the first time even before New England like when they were colonizing the United States and all these people came over from Europe and the Indians were like hey man it's like August you guys better get to work and they're like whatever we're gonna get drunk and blah 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 and then like winter came and they were all eating each other the last survivor of Roanoke ate himself and uh, scratched a word into a signpost describing the rumble in his tummy it was Croatoa Actually, uh, theory suggests Grow that the, Toa for my stew. Theory oh my suggests God. that the the settlers of Croatoa actually just went further south to like a a an tribe. Island. Well, it's like an island, but it was like a tribe that was like all about women, women yeah. and the, sex. The, the lost colony of Roanoke <laughs> was supposed to have just gone to this island because they had girls. Yeah, that's, gr- that's a great yeah. non like uh, they put non- Croatoa to throw people off. I mean, yeah, I yeah. Google it, but I read an article where they were just like, "Look, they just went. It, it, guys went after chicks. I mean, fucking no big deal. There. No big deal. Croatoa yeah. was the name of the island. Like they were like, hey, just in case you need us, we'll be over here.' All right. So now mystery. we're gonna get now we're gonna get into the the relief efforts. 
So oh, there was actually a gentleman who was kicked out of the group named John Reese who went to tell people that they, you know, they were stuck. But when he got to tell people like, hey, these people are stuck, they need military help to get pulled out, uh, the Mexican-American War was going on. And so they actually, for like two months, he just joined the military and fought in the war instead of going back and rescuing these people. Because basically the military Shit. was like, you help us with this war, we'll help you go get your family that's stuck in the mountains. He's like, but it's snowing. And it's like, they're like, hmm. there's almost none of them left. Yeah. Like, they're, they all got one arm. Like, really, I don't have time to fight in the war. <laughs> actually... By the end of it, 45 of the 90 survived. Dang. They were just all incredibly fucked oh, man, mentally. Yeah. That's, and what year was this again? When did this happen? Uh, 1800s. In the 1800s. Okay, I get it's that. It's been less than 200 years. See, basically. I feel like there was a lot of these type of stories just like further back in the history of humanity. Oh, I think sure. if you go back like 5,000 years, this was like tons and tons of families every single winter. Yeah. Like just trying to, you know, before they had roads and before we had like a lot of protection. And uh, I feel like, I don't think we've been in America for 5,000 years. I think it's like, that's true. It wouldn't have been America. It would have been somewhere like Europe, like European, <laughs> like, like imagine the mountains. Like, Jesus Christ. I don't know. I don't know. That so, is, that is terrifying though. And I, and I feel bad that I made a joke about it, but like just, it keeps getting more ridiculous and more ridiculous. Like now they're just selling people off before they're even dead. But, um, and so 45 of the 90 survived. Yes. So in the second relief group, the first relief group made it. I think they only lost two people. They lost a kid and a, an adult. Uh, the second relief group got stuck again oh on their God. way down. They got stuck in another another av- like a blizzard. So most of the adults left the second group. They left one adult and all the children, and they said, "We'll be back." And the thing was, is like once the rescuers got there and saw what was going on, and basically all these kids were like, "Yeah, human flesh." They cap them all. No, they they literally talked about contemplated leaving them there and just like let let the elements take care of this because this is a problem. Mm -hmm. These kids are just they're children. This is scarring. They're going to grow up to be psychopaths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely the kind of thing you need some therapy. You come you come back from that, you better go see somebody. Two. Two gentlemen who were like the burly, like mountain men gentlemen were like, fuck that. We're not leaving a bunch of children in the mountains. I'm not putting that on my conscience. Mm-hmm. And this one guy literally would pick, he, he brought nine children off that mountain. He, by picking one up, carrying them a few feet, setting them down and going back and grabbing another one. Holy shit. And he, he did that for days and just brought them all down the mountain. That's insane. <clears throat> I wonder if the uh, lumberjack song is actually supposed to be sung in the minor key while crying then. I'm keep not, swinging. I'm not, He's I'm keep not, swinging. I'm not. I want to tell him swinging. to get out, but I'm not. I'm, just, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so the main villain. There's actually a main villain in this whole situation, and it it started around the guy that told him to go that way. No, the nope. different stars above. No, there is a gentleman by the name of Louis Kesseberg, who He's was a actual. part. He was a part of the group. He was called Kesseberg the Cannibal, <clears throat> and basically by the third relief party is where he gets notoriety. Because he took, like, base, so families had to divide for relief efforts. The men had to go and help people get off the mountain, you know. So this gentleman left his family, went to go help with the relief efforts. He gets back for the third relief effort to find out that Louis Kesselberg had basically taken this guy's three-year-old son into his tent and suffocated him to death for food. And he's called Kesselberg the Cannibal? Yes, he gets way worse. That's that's just the first thing he that's did. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of what this sick bastard did. Like back in these days, he was just Kesserberg. Yeah. He didn't have the whole full title. He yeah. had to eat some fucking people first. And the, Are you smiling because you think he earned it? No, I just think Kesserberg the cannibal sounds funny. The, like, when that relief party showed up, that the dad of the son was like, if I ever see you in California, I'm going to murder you. I'm not going to kill you up on this mountain because there's been too much murder to go down in this land. He's like, but if I ever see you in California, and he grabbed his family and left. So at this point, as the third, uh, third relief left, it was him and five other people. For the fourth relief to come back for Kesselberg, they basically, basically came back for loot because the four or five people they left were either sick or hurt or couldn't make it, and so they needed more people. So the fourth came back for the last scragglers and also to loot to basically just go through other people's shit and bring back stuff that they could claim as their own. Sure. Um, and actually, the Donners put silver in their wagon, and there was, like, this whole big thing about, like, going to find, the, the like, a treasure up there because, like, all this silver. But it turned out that people recovered it way before that. 
But when they came back, Louis Kesselberg was the only one left, and they described it as a war zone because there was just dismembered body parts everywhere from the remaining group. And they, they, that's where he got the nickname Kesselberg the Cannibal because he basically, for a, another week, slowly picked off and dismembered the rest of the weakened group. And then he was brought down off the mountain. And he was part of the original group or part of the relief group? He was part of the original group. Okay, okay. He was the last survivor to come off the mountain. Got it. Because he fucking ate everybody. <clears throat> yeah. He literally was standing atop a mountain Well, the of thing is, bones. is he actually got a bunch of, like, silver and, like, valuables and buried them. And so when the group came back, they realized that they were missing a lot of stuff that wasn't on the list. And so they hung him. Jesus and, like, Christ. up in a tree to make, like, to make him talk. Like, where did you hide it? And finally he told him they let him down and they tied him up to a horse and drug him off the mountain. Shit. He lived for another 10 years and did not get charged with any How of because the mur- all that murders of those people. The guy had a lot of protein God. in his system for me. I bet when they hung him, there were like finger bones falling out and shit, you know? All there I can all I can think about is those scenes from the Bugs Bunny cartoons where like somebody tried to, to eat somebody else by tricking him into getting in a cauldron like it's a warm bath. Yeah. I can go, God, it's Ooh. fucking cold up here. Do you want to take? I prepared a hot like sauna, chopping yeah. the uh, chopping carrots, chopping <laughs> onions and stuff. <laughs> Mr. Kesselberg, is it really necessary to put all this seasoning in here with me? Yeah, it's good. It for relieves the, your pores. It exfoliates so, the skin. If uh, this story is interest you in any way shape or form you need to go listen to last podcast on the left they did a full in-depth uh, detailed uh two episode report on it on far more tasteful than ours i'm sure far more tasteful uh, also like. far more far more in depth in their information <clears throat> like it's they're both episodes are two hours long roughly and it's uh, episode 331 and 332 also check out the indifferent stars above by daniel james brown which is an amazing title i'm sure i'm sure reading that's a lot better than listening to fucking us I, laugh about there's so much in this that i didn't put from the book because i want people to read the book because mm-hmm. it's just so much yeah. better it's i'm sure it's a lot it's, it's a way lot better than anything to... i could ever bring up it's just it's a it's a punch well, in the to, gut. and to me like even even after all the joking it's, and I'm just in kind of a goofy mood. I don't think it's a funny story. It's but, not, but, but it's the, harrowing. Like <laughs> the part about them deciding they're gonna have to eat each other and like figuring out the the mechanics of that, who's gonna do what. That that's terrifying, because like, that's where humanity <laughs> breaks down. You know, that, that's mm-hmm. to me the scary thing. I, people have had to eat people a lot down through history. There's still cannibalism. Think you'd ever do it if there was no legal ref, uh, ramifications for it. If someone just went. I have this person. They, they're, it's completely legal. Cook them up, and you have human meat for the first time. No, would you do it? Well, th- how do you? Are they already dead? Are they volunteering to be cooked, or do you have to murder them? See, there's another. No, no, no it's like somebody that just died of natural causes, and like it's they're like, fresh dead, and there's nothing yeah. else to eat, and they're saying, no, 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 it's literally just somebody is like it's a dish. He's it's saying. a would, dish. Someone makes a dish and is no, just like, do you no, want to no. try human I flesh? Would. No, absolutely not. No? no, would you? No. Casey would. I, I don't maybe, know. I'm maybe maybe curious. I can't say, I'm curious. I can't say yeah, no. Well, there's, there's, see, and there's that's a scary thing. It's like, what would you do to survive? And that that raises another kind of depressing question. What do you have to live for? Like a lot of people, if all they had to eat were <coughs> bugs, and you've heard of people like that get lost in the woods and they have no food and they start eating grub worms. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's a massive source of protein and it's like it's disgusting and you chew them, they pop and they squish and it goes all down your fucking throat. Just think of how gross. It's like that book, The Troop. You mm-hmm. know, like um, the way they describe that guy eating those spiders and how they felt inside his mouth. It's disgusting. But what would you do to survive? And I think you would have to go. What do I have to live for? Like if you had like a family and stuff, I think you would do anything you had to to survive to try to get back to them. And if there was a recently dead guy, literally nothing else to eat, I think you'd eat him. If it meant I'll never get to see my fucking kids again or something, I know people that would do anything it took. And I know some people that just go, you know what? It's not worth it. Like, see, that's the thing. I don't I, got a lot going on. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fucking tap out, you know. That's the part where like uh, uh principles and moral compass would actually maybe get me in trouble for answering this because I have plenty to live for and it's why I would choose to starve to death over doing that. Not that I judge or begrudge the people that did that because survival, it's its own thing, but I just, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's a personal <clears throat> decision. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. It's also really hard, I think, to estimate what, how you would react in these situations until you're in them. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. the, like, it's the whole thing. Like, would you kill another man if somebody just goes, would you kill somebody? Most people go, no, I wouldn't kill anybody. What if you had to? What do you mean had to? Why would I have to? Well, I don't know. Let's just say you did. They're going to do something to you. Or they're going to do something to somebody you love. Would you kill somebody out of protection to yourself or somebody else? Well, that's still situational. Well, I don't know. I don't know. What's the situation? Like, 
It's a lot of those crazy things to think mm-hmm. about. Again, insulated in our cushy little fucking... Uh, it, you clearly distracted. I'll by definitely the not complain about being cold ever again. Our trunk or treat existence. Yeah, yeah, and our and our fucking smartphones in 2018 and everything like that. Like we don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. We don't even have to technically leave the house if we want to eat. Grubhub, fucking Postmates, oh God, you know. Yeah. Like, but but my point is like, a long time ago, and not in the grand scheme of things. Rogan talks about this all the time. It's not been that long. Not been that long in the grand scheme of things. The Donner Party happened less than 200 years ago. That's right. That's right. Think about that. Like that's. They're relatively that recent, people were in situations where like there was no power, there was no food, there was no, you know, like, I don't know. What would you do if you were in a, like a mortality matters type of situation? Like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I'd like to think that I would be brave, but there's a lot of horror in bravery too. Yeah. yeah. Hide- C.S. Lewis wrote a book and he, it wasn't necessarily about this, but he titled it That Hideous Strength. Mm-hmm. And there is a very hideous type of like strength, I think, that people sometimes just, I had to do it and I'd do whatever I had to do. It's fucking terrible. There's, dude, there's people in soldiers that have stories that are just like... Well, it's like that rugby team that crashed in, what, the Alps? Uh, yeah, I, think I, was, I was thinking of that the whole time. And they, they had to resort to cannibalism, and that happened, like, in the 80s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something. 70s or 80s. So there's a lot. What, what else you got? You got some other... Give us some uh, more. The next thing I wanted to move on to was American serial killers. Okay, let's do it. Because I think nothing screams true American horror like some sick individuals that just murdered the shit out of people for fun. Yeah, because that's real. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's real. Like, like you're literally on your way to fucking Kroger to get a box of Ding Dongs, and there's a guy with an axe, and like, that's it. Yeah. You know? There goes- the first one I want to talk about was H.H. H. Holmes, mm. which was basically the, hotel the first. Guy? This is the murder oh, castle guy. Yeah, I've, been, I've been really dying to hear about this. My neighbor told me this briefly out in the driveway. He goes, you know, there was like a guy that had like this hotel, and like he was killing people and just dumping them down the, the garbage chute, and like... And he did it for fucking ever. I was like, what? The more, the more I dug into the story, the more I can't tell. Because the guy, his name is Dr. Henry Howard Holmes. That was his made-up alias. His actual name was Herman Mudgett. Okay. And he was a con man and a sadist. So he was, mm-hmm. I mean, he did murder people. He murdered, he, they basically confirmed nine people. Uh, he confessed to 27. He said he killed 27 people. And then later on said that, no, it was more closer to 200. Shit. But he was also a con man. So I think the more notoriety he got for being violent and vicious, the more he added tacked on people. To That's that. likely true. Yeah. Um, but he did. He moved to Chicago, uh, basically opened the World's Fair Hotel, and people would come in to stay and not leave. That, that's the whole, like, the little nice little you check in, but you don't check out. Sure. Comes from the murder castle. And he actually, I mean, he loved praying from what I could find on, like, people who were about to die and just take their life insurance policies and use it for his own He his found own a way game. to somehow yeah. import that. Or like, you know, they would send like mail, you know, like <coughs> social forgery. security checks. Sure he or, just foraged all the documents oh, yeah. and just collected. But he, he had, he built this massive three-story building that would be later known as the World's Fair Hotel or the Murder Hotel or, you know, uh, the Murder Castle is what mm-hmm. most people call it. It's three stories, and he actually kept hiring and firing contractors. So, and then change up things. So nobody would find it, right? Find the bodies or whatever. Well, not only that, but he that way he could add secret stuff, like oh. ways to walk behind the walls and secret rooms that nobody else knew. And so these contractors would come in, make these rooms. He'd fire and bring in other contractors, and they didn't know that, that room existed, and they'd continue on. Uh, it was said that he had secret walls, trap doors. Uh, like bookshelves that move, like basically your creepy haunted house kind of thing. And like he would leak gas into some rooms and suffocate people out with gas. Uh, he would put them to sleep and drag them into a secret room from their room and torture them. At that, now, at this point, you're basically talking about a super villain. Yeah. Like yeah. This is a fucking guy that's got unlimited resources. He can build rooms to fucking kill you in while he's like like out on the street shaking hands and stuff, you know, like he's totally got a motive. Like this, this is a actual fucking super villain. This is like the real life Lex Luthor. You know? mm-hmm. This guy came up with an idea. Like one of his friends came up with an idea and was like, Hey, we'll fake my death. And cause I know, you know how, I mean, you're, you're, you're real smart homes. You can, you can fake my death. And I have a life insurance policy of $10,000. And so we'll split it and then I can leave. Cause I don't like marrying my, you know, I don't want to be married to my wife anymore. So this guy was going to fake his death, leave the town, get $5,000. Back then, pretty good. Yeah. H.H. H. Holmes just murdered him. Mm-hmm. was like, yeah. Took it all? Took it all. <laughs> they like signed, he signed paperwork, and he's like, all right, you, you ready for this? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, cool. And just killed him. 
fucking, he's like, all right, this is a great idea. Let's go to my study and to smoke cover- some cigars. And cigars like a stick of dynamite. He's like, eat shit. I'm taking it all. To I'm cover it up, he had to murder this guy's three kids. Because Jesus the people, kept, the kids kept coming, digging around and snooping around. And Holmes was like, hey, come on in. Chloroform. And then just, you know, dumped him. This guy is a super villain. Fucking slaughterhouse. Like, and that's the thing. Like, like I the said, they not afraid only- of like, he's just like. I'll fucking kill you. I'll kill. I'll kill you and your fucking dog right now. Yeah, they I've only killed can, so many people today. They only confirmed nine. That's the only the police could only nail him with nine murders. But he claimed at the time that he had done twenty seven. Like, let me ask you this: when they uh, when they finally busted the guy and they started like tearing the hotel, did they find just like fuck that's it, the thing? He piles got, of he bones. Got, he got busted years later in Boston, of oh, all places. Interesting. Like, whatever happened to the remains of those people? Did they ever find their remains? Were they ever given a proper well, that's burial? The, the hotel, that's the thing happened, is a lot hotel. of the people he murdered were like by themselves. And so when they just disappeared, it's like no one really cared. Shit. No one, no one came looking for him. And that's, that's, that's what he loved is finding people who, nah, no one really cares about that, that person. No one's going to come looking. Shit, that's going to be Patrick. It's going to be fucking me, dude. Fuck, I got no family in here. I got no fucking like I'm single. I'm, I'm going to watch out for I'd a guy. Lo- that's American Psycho all the way. Uh, I'm watching out. If I find a guy like that, he goes, "Hey, if you have an insurance policy, I'm going to get the fuck out of there." If someone opens with that, Spencer, you should take him to dinner. It's true. Wait, is that guy lonely? Doesn't matter. Okay, are what you, else you got? You? What else you got? I wasn't even trying to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to pull up because I watched the, the show Mind Hunters. You guys ever seen Mind Hunters so on Netflix? Good. It is um, so good. It's yeah, so I've seen good. a few episodes of it. I didn't get to finish it because it's just too much. But like, uh, I really, really, really like uh, Jonathan Groff, the guy that's in it. He, mm-hmm. I liked him from. Well, he was in my favorite uh, play of all time, Spring Awakening, and he was on Glee. And like, I really like Groff. Groff Jonathan Groff's fucking fantastically yeah. talented. Yeah, and the show the show's great. However, a lot of people who watched the show were, were kind of wondering at the end of every episode or at the beginning of every episode, there was, they, they focused in on one gentleman who never really made it in the story. He's going to be season two though. Uh, they said more Manson for the second season. I don't know. But who basically is this guy in Kansas who yes. dropped yes, yes. letters in the mail. And at one point he was like in this, in a house and, uh, left and it, it's real weird, real creepy. Is that a true story? Yes, mm-hmm. it okay. is actually this Dennis is awesome. Rader, the BTK killer, is what they were leading towards. BTK, and What's it that? builds up. Uh, bind, it, torture, kill. Bind, torture, kill is what oh, it stood okay, for. He was and, a. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say he's kind of a dork, to be honest with you, because he started writing poems to the police and mm-hmm. started like writing letters and things like that, and all of his letters were real like. God complex kind of thing. Well, he was an avid church goer too. So I don't know what was actually fucked up with him. Like if he was one of those weird people that, um, I guess believed in his head, but was sick as fuck, you know, in the heart, or if it was just all a front, you should look him up. Well, it's they, fascinating. They said, but it's terrifying. Wasn't he a deacon in his own church. Yeah. That's what it, he was. He was a staple sure. of his community. He Which was weird, well known. So was Ronald, by o- everybody. Ronald O'Brien was also a deacon in his own church. Mm. Well, and they said, do you guys know Ed Gein? Oh yes. yeah. Fucking yeah. Leatherface. Uh, that guy, they said he was a real sweet guy. I guess so there, there were people who actually testified about his character before they found that he was like wearing people's skin. You know, like. Yeah, if you don't know BTK, you should look him up. He got caught basically because he got bored cocky. and arrogant. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, I was like and nine or he, 10 when he got caught. That was a huge guess deal. He, well, guess when he got arrested? Hmm. 2005. He's still alive. Mm hmm. Shit. Well, like Jeffrey Dahmer. Serving and these guys, 10 years you know. prison, 10, 10, uh, 10 life sentences. Sorry. I would have been 13. Sorry. Um, but yeah, he murdered 10 people spanning from 1974 to 1991. Yeah. Uh, his first murder, he basically murdered an entire family. He broke into these people, this, the Orte, uh, Otero family. He killed both parents and two children. The third child came back from a sleepover and discovered his whole family murdered. Who's got more kills to, than anybody? Who's the, who's the American killer with the <sighs> most kills? Technically, from, Ted Bundy? I'd say, let's see. Google brought up John Wayne Gacy. Although I'd also say Richard Ramirez didn't kill a lot of people, but he was real violent and brutal. Well, and wasn't so, supposedly Manson never actually killed anybody. He yeah. just orchestrated the deaths of like Sharon Tate and all these people. Yeah. Yeah, that that was actually the the thing with Manson is the amount of like mind games and the the race war and all that stuff. Right. Um basically his mist- Manson is very Joker-esque like from the Dark Knight in that way. He Except that Joker did kill people. But point being, the amount of people that died versus the amount of mayhem that he was directly responsible for sure. 
gave him legendary status and a, and a fear that permeates the culture to this day, even though he didn't do anything to anybody directly with his hands. Yeah. So John Wayne Gacy has 33 confirmed kills, and mm-hmm. he buried people in the floor. Like, he buried... Mm-hmm. And it, his was all boys. Like, he, he would, like, bring young young teenage boys to his house, do sick shit, and then kill them because he didn't want people Bury to find out that he the was... Floorboard. Yeah. Shit, that's pretty fucking dark. Yeah. So, the, well, the last thing I want to say about BTK is one woman got a letter from him. Basically, she went out that night and stayed at a friend's house because she got too drunk, came back home, saw some things were in, like, disorder or disarray, and then got a letter later saying that she survived the BTK killer because he was in her in her house waiting for her to come home, and she never oh, came home fuck. that night. Can you imagine how lucky you must feel and also terrified for the rest of your life? Even with him behind bars? Jesus Christ. That's fucking nuts. <clears throat> That's not, It's crazy. Well, I mean, and there, let's, you know... If we're going to go out on a note, that's a note. It's fucking the America is scary, man. Like, and that's the thing too, that back. I've noticed is you don't really see a lot of this kind of serial killing going on nowadays. Thank God. Because I think a lot of people stay inside. Yeah. yeah, but there's a lot of murders. See what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you don't call it serial killing until they tie them all together. Yeah. I bet there are still, and again, this is Of fam- course there this is. This is sort of, you know, romantic, especially on this podcast, but like, I bet there are serial killers out there right now doing their thing. And people are just going, oh, we found a guy in the lake. That was weird. And like, until you find the pattern. all together. Yeah, picture yeah. that. Picture that uh, procedural cop drama where they're all standing in front of the map and they're pointing at the fucking, the, oh, this connects, to, like they're drawing string and stuff. They're, oh, oh they, he's, he's at the warehouse, you know, like and they find, bust a guy and then, then it goes on the news. Yeah. You know we had I mean? the like, zoo man here when I was a kid. Oh, I forgot about that. The yeah. zoo man. What's that? Yeah, he killed prostitutes at the zoo. Yeah, there he pro- worked at the. There did he are work at the, zoo? at the zoo? No, no, he would bring prostitutes back in the Knoxville oh, Zoo and kill okay. them there. Yeah. yeah, my bad. Well, on that note, now that we've got it, <laughs> now that everybody feels nice and safe, uh, uh, folks, we've been the Beacon House Podcast. We appreciate you guys tuning in. This one was rough. Yeah, cannibalism <laughs> is not funny. I, I mean, apologize. Cannibalism and death and like all kinds of. Yeah, I mean, you know, anything's funny if you can laugh at it. Just, all right, well, guys, look, we appreciate you. you guys check us out on social media. Casey, why don't you tell them where they can find us? At Beacon House Knox on Instagram and Twitter, Beacon House Podcast on Facebook, and the Beacon House Podcast on YouTube. Send us some questions. We'll start putting them in the coffin, our little Beacon House coffin that we draw the questions from. And it will, from. It will be upgraded. We're going we're gonna to add things to it. Every, You're going to upgrade every, the coffin? I'm going to add things. I'm going to make it like the most bozo coffin spaceship thing ever. Every Sweet. mailbag, we're going to add new things like to it. You got anything else? Happy Halloween. Oh, my.